In Bolivia, a landlocked country located in South America and bordered by five countries, citizens are waiting in long queues outside of banks to buy US currency. This is because the central bank has stopped publishing data on its foreign currency reserves, raising concerns that it may not have enough hard cash to support the country's financial system and pay its debts. Experts say Bolivia is on the brink of an economic crisis. But Bolivia is not alone. Lebanon, Sri Lanka and Pakistan are facing a similar fate, all of which have seen a decline in foreign reserves of at least 75% since 2020. Meanwhile, Bolivia's net foreign reserves have fallen from a peak of over $14 billion in 2014 to less than $400 million now. To understand why this is an issue for these countries, think in terms of imports versus exports and, for the sake of simplicity, let's focus on the physical supply of dollars. When a country wants to buy goods, say cars, from Japan, it generally pays for those goods with US dollars because that is what Japan wants. Similarly, when they sell something to Japan, Japan will pay in dollars. As no single country can produce everything it needs, so they need US dollars, as it is the international currency for imports and exports of goods. But why do Bolivians want dollars? Because Bolivians believe their currency, the Boliviano, is losing its value due to the fragile state of the Bolivian economy. Many businesses in Bolivia prefer to use the US dollar as their primary currency instead of the Boliviano, and those looking to buy imported products prefer to use dollars. So why is Bolivia's economy so troubled? There are a couple of reasons. When the Federal Reserve, America's central bank, started raising interest rates last year, it became harder for countries like Bolivia to take on foreign debt. The war in Ukraine has made fuel imports much more expensive, so the government has started using its reserves to support the value of its currency. This means that Bolivia is buying its own currency in the foreign exchange market using US dollars. This is done to increase the demand for the Boliviano and stabilize or increase its value, which has been fixed at a rate of 6.96 Bolivianos to the US dollar since 2011. Additionally, the government is also using its reserves to provide financial support or subsidies for fuel. The shortage of US dollars in the country has been made worse by recent problems, but the underlying cause is a long-standing issue. In recent years, Bolivia has experienced political instability, particularly in the aftermath of the 2019 presidential election, which was marred by allegations of electoral fraud. The election was won by Evo Morales, who has been in power since 2006, but his victory was disputed, and mass protests erupted throughout the country. The military ultimately intervened, and Morales resigned and fled the country, leading to a period of political uncertainty. Before 2019, the country was doing very well, it was growing rapidly and improving living standards for its people. According to the World Bank, the proportion of people living on the equivalent of less than $2.15 a day, after adjusting for inflation, fell from 15% in 2005 to 2% by 2019, which many called Bolivia's economic miracle. It would be easy to blame recent political instability for all of Bolivia's economic problems, but it's a longer-term issue. Bolivia has an economic model that is no longer sustainable, like dozens of other developing economies around the world that are starting to face very similar challenges today. So, what is Bolivia's economic model? What's happened to its economic miracle? And finally, what is its last hope? In the 19th century, the term neoliberalism was used to describe the political and economic ideology that re-emerged in the late 20th century as free market capitalism. In the aftermath of World War II, West Germany was faced with a shattered economy and a dire need for reconstruction. The country's government began to implement a range of economic policies that emphasized private enterprise, free trade, and reduced government intervention. These policies included the dismantling of trade barriers, the removal of price controls, and the privatization of state-owned industries. These policies led to a period of sustained economic growth in West Germany which came to be known as the economic miracle. The success of this approach led to its adoption in other countries, including the United Kingdom, United States, and Latin America. In the 1980s, nearly all of Latin America transitioned away from state-led economic development policies to uncontrolled and extreme free market policies, or neoliberalism. This led to a severe economic crisis, with mounting foreign debt, and out-of-control inflation in all of Latin America, including Bolivia. 
the Bolivian economy suffered massive job losses in the state oil company, industry and mining. Output fell, children suffered malnutrition and social crime increased. The Bolivian government sought US aid and needed Washington's considerable leverage to get loans with the World Bank and IMF to stabilize the situation. But the World Bank wanted something in return. It required Bolivia to ban coca production and privatize the country's railroads, airlines, telephone systems, and oil industry, including water services. The World Bank recommended taking a hardline stance, advising that no subsidy should be given to ameliorate the increase in water tariffs. This led to vast protests, known as the Water Wars, which erupted in Cochabamba, Bolivia's fourth largest city, between December 1999 and April 2000. In 2003, the IMF advised the Bolivian government to implement austerity policies aimed at reducing government budget deficits through spending cuts, tax increases, and the sale of Bolivian natural gas deposits to foreign firms. These policies led to protests that erupted in the city of El Alto and spread throughout the country. The protesters demanded that the government nationalize the gas industry and halt plans to export gas to the United States and Mexico. The government responded with force, leading to violent clashes between protesters and security forces that resulted in dozens of deaths. Directly or indirectly, the US played a crucial role in Bolivia's water and gas wars. Given the asymmetry between the two nations, the US has long used its considerable power advantages to compel Bolivia to bend to its wishes. It is possible that Bolivia could have moved to neoliberal policies on its own, but the unbending nature of the implementation of these measures was a result of US pressure, either directly or through the World Bank and the IMF. Neoliberalism created severe social pressures of mounting poverty and widespread unemployment while the war on illegal drugs killed off the best available option for gainful employment. Therefore, it is fair to conclude that it was US power and US overreach that led to the emergence of Evo Morales, a strongman in Bolivia elected to the presidency in 2005. Soon after Evo Morales came to power, he nationalized the country's natural gas industry with the state company Yacimientos Petroliferos Fiscales Bolivianos, or YBFB, and handed over majority control. Now, the state takes a bigger share of revenue from oil and gas companies than in any other country in Latin America. Bolivia enjoys the second largest natural gas reserves in Latin America, after Venezuela, and so regaining control of this key resource was vital for the economic well-being of Bolivia. Morales struck it lucky during his tenure, as gas prices doubled to record highs in 2006. This allowed Bolivia to accumulate the largest foreign reserves in its history. Foreign reserves rose from 10% of GDP in 2003 to 45% by 2015. Social spending under Morales on education, health and poverty reduction increased by 45% from 2005 to 2012. Under his administration, Bolivia has increased public infrastructure spending seven times over. These economic bonus and multiplier effects have grown the real GDP per person much faster over the last eight years. For a while, Things looked good in Bolivia still today. It has among the lowest inflation not just in the region, but in the world. And people said that Bolivia was going through an economic miracle, but in reality, the model wasn't sustainable. The government spent too much of its cash from natural gas on fuel subsidies, inefficient state firms, and propping up the exchange rate. Fuel prices have frozen many times since 2005. A litre of fuel costs around 54 cents in Bolivia compared to around $1.31 in the rest of the world. The populist policies have inhibited foreign investment. In 1999, after the country's energy sector was privatized, annual net inflows of foreign direct investment as a share of GDP hit a peak of 12%. Over the past five years, it has averaged 0.1%. The tipping point came in 2014, when Bolivia's finances started to deteriorate, mainly because there was a big fall in gas production, but the government didn't scale back its policies. Instead, it piled on debts and used its reserves to fund things like subsidies or to pay for its currency pegs. In 2008, a fixed exchange rate was introduced, which since 2011 has been set at 6.96 bolivianos per dollar. For a while, this kept inflation low, but now it has bottled up problems. Public debt has doubled since 2014. It's now around 80% of GDP, 
which is above the regional and world average and dangerously high for a lower middle income country. Bolivia has been running persistent and large deficits for most of that time, so in the past year, it actually became a net importer of hydrocarbons, when it's usually exported loads of hydrocarbons. The main problem with Bolivia's economic model was that it was based only on commodity exports. It failed to develop basic industries, such as steel and petrochemical plants. For the industrialization of its vast natural resources and to diversify the economy. Now, both gas prices and production have been falling since 2014, and the cash gusher is running dry. The country's gigantic informal economy provides a cushion against a meltdown. Over two-thirds of Bolivians work in the informal sector, which is one of the highest shares in the world. Since fuel in Bolivia is so cheap, much of it gets smuggled abroad and sold at higher prices. So, there are dollars circulating in the Bolivian economy, they're just not necessarily in government coffers. The final long-term hope for the government is lithium, which is used for things like batteries, smartphones and electric vehicles. Bolivia has the world's largest lithium brine resources, but it hasn't yet been able to sell any lithium at a commercial scale, and Bolivia's populist policies have turned off much needed investment. So, there are these kinds of flashes of hope, and Bolivia might have a saviour in lithium. But it has very serious structural issues that have built up over the last 20 years, and those aren't going away anytime soon.